most exciting destination in all of northern Wisconsin. LCO Casino Lodge and Convention Center Hayward. LCO. Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the Nave News Update. It's Friday, July 20th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for today from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The U.S. Department of Energy issued the first loan guarantee solicitation for the Tribal Energy Loan Guarantee Program under its Loan Programs Office. This solicitation provides as much as $2 billion in partial loan guarantees to support economic opportunities for Native American and Alaska Native communities through energy development projects and activities. Authorized by the Energy Policy Act of 2005, the Tribal Energy Loan Guarantee Program would provide partial loan guarantees to leverage private sector lending and help increase the availability of commercial debt financing in tribal energy markets rather than replace existing debt markets for commercial technologies. This partial loan guarantee model is based on the successful financial institutional partnership program that the U.S. Department of Energy has used to help projects leverage public and private lending for energy infrastructure projects. The 2018 Second U Cross Fellowship for Native American Visual Artists has been awarded to mixed media artist and Cherokee Nation citizen Brenda Mallory. Mallory was chosen through a juried national selection process. The award includes a one-month residency at U Cross, a stipend of $1,000, and inclusion in a forthcoming exhibition at the U Cross Art Gallery in 2019. The Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts is providing major support for the fellowship. Mallory has received grants from the Oregon Arts Commission, the Ford Family Foundation, and the Regional Arts and Cultural Council. In 2015, she was the Idle George Museum Contemporary Native Art Fellow, and in 2016, she received a fellowship in the visual arts from the Native Arts and Culture Foundation. The U Cross Fellowship for Native American Visual Artists was initiated in 2017 to support the work of contemporary Native American visual artists at all the stages of their professional careers. Two fellowships are awarded annually, one in the spring and fall. Beginning in 2019, fellowship stipends will be $2,000. The next application deadline for fellowships is October 1st, and the application can be found at ucross.org. In its 16th year, the Native American Basketball Invitational has become the biggest Native American basketball tournament in North America. Around 160 teams applied from across the U.S. for the 128 spots that were available in this year's tournament. A team whose players never practiced or played together before this year's event took a shocking championship win. Savage Storm, based out of Okeechobee, Florida, won the Division I title. Teresa Frost and her husband, Stefan, have sponsored Savage Storm for seven years. Frost finds kids who have been cut from other teams around the country and cannot afford to attend the Invitational to compile her roster for the tournament. This year, the team was made up of players from Native American reservations across the country, including South Dakota, Mississippi, Florida, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. The Storm defeated CMD from Fort McDowell, Arizona in the championship game 69-65 to capture the trophy. Cyclists from the 2018 Remember the Removal Bike Ride arrived in Tahlequah, Oklahoma June 21st, finishing their three-week trek that retraced the northern route of the Trail of Tears. The ride started on June 3rd in New Echota, Georgia, the former capital of the Cherokee Nation prior to forced removal to present-day Oklahoma. Cyclists from the Cherokee Nation and the Eastern Band of Cherokee rode nearly 1,000 miles through portions of seven states. During the journey from Georgia to Oklahoma, participants visited historical landmarks that were important to the Cherokee people, including Blythe Ferry in Tennessee, which was the last part of the Cherokee homeland walked by the ancestors, before beginning their journey into Indian Territory. They also visited Mantle Rock in Kentucky, which provided shelter to many Cherokees as they waited for safe passage across the frozen Ohio River. Of the estimated 16,000 Cherokees forced to make the Trail of Tears journey to Indian Territory 180 years ago, around 4,000 died due to exposure to elements, starvation, and disease. Former U.S. Army Private First Class Jessica Lynch serves as an honorary chair of the 2018 Fiesta Bowl Lori Piestoa National Native American Games on July 20th through the 22nd. Lynch and Native American basketball star Jude Schemmel, a member of the Umatilla, spoke and met attendees at the APS Health Fair and opening ceremonies. The largest competition of its kind, the 2018 Games, 
has attracted more than 3,000 athletes representing more than 50 tribes from across North America. The games are named for Lori Piestua, a U.S. Army soldier killed in Iraq in 2003. Piesta was the first Native American woman to die in combat while serving in the military. Jessica Lynch, who was awarded a Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and a Prisoner of War medal by the U.S. Armed Forces, was wounded and captured in the ambush that resulted in Piestawa's death. During the event, Native American athletes will compete in basketball, volleyball, youth baseball, softball, cross country, and track and field. For more information, you can check out azsportsent.com. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Nave News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me, and have a grand day.